is lesson 5.8, solving problems with exponents and logarithms. In this lesson we'll be solving problems similar to what we solved earlier in this unit, but in order to solve them earlier in the unit we had to use decimals, we had to use some type of technology. Well now what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to take these problems and use the algebraic skills that we've learned in previous lessons in order to solve these. Okay? So some of the questions, uh, just like I said, will look uh, fairly similar, um, but we'll be attacking them in a little bit different fashion. So the first type of question that we're going to do right here is solving a problem involving future value. All right. So I just want to um, give you the equation first, um, just to kind of remind you what this looks like. So the equation that we have is we have fv, essentially meaning our future value, is equal to r. Okay, so that's my regular investment, all multiplied by, so we have some brackets right here, uh, 1 plus i, okay, and i is going to be my interest rate per compounding period, all raised to the power of n minus 1, all divided by i, okay, and I should say what n is. n is the number of um, investments. Okay, so now that we have our equation here, let's go and tackle the uh, problem that we're given. So example 1 here says, uh, determine how many monthly investments, so that's going to be n here, of $200 would have to be made into an account that pays 6% annual interest compounded monthly for the future value to be $100,000. Okay, So I'm going to start here by substituting in this uh, information. So for my future value, of course, I'm going to have $100,000, just like so. Okay, The uh, amount that I'm putting in right here, my regular investment, is going to be 200 So I substitute in that. Um, my I value right here is going to be, um, this is the part that's maybe a little bit complicated, uh, I is going to be equal to, it's not just your interest rate, it's the interest rate divided by the number of compounds. So uh, in this case, it's 0 decimal 0, 06 divided by, because we're doing it monthly, it's going to be divided by 12. And so when you uh, simplify this, it ends up giving you 0 decimal 0, 0, 005. So I'm actually going to write 0 decimal 0, 0, 005 down there. So that's the only thing that really makes this one complicated, is just to understand that you don't just put in um, that value uh, right there. So um, when I simplify up here, so I have my brackets, I'm going to have 1 plus 0 decimal 0, 0, 005, right, because that was my I value. Uh, I'll raise to the power of n, that's what we're going to try to figure out, uh, minus 1 like so. Okay. So, that's my equation. Um, before, if you remember, how we went and solved this was we moved the 100,000 to the other side of the equation, and then we just went and put it into decimals. So this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So first thing I'm going to do right here is I'm going to get rid of this fraction. I'm going to multiply um, both sides of the equation by this 0 decimal 0, 0, 005. So I multiply the 100,000 uh, by that. And when you do that, we're left with 500. So 500 now is equal to 200 all multiplied by 1 plus 0 decimal 0, 0, 005 raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay. Um, from there, what I'm going to do is I'm noticing that 200 is being multiplied by this. Well, the opposite operation, so to get rid of that 200, is I can go and divide both sides by 200. And so I'll divide 500 by 200, so that gives me 2.5. Because this 200 is gone, um, now you don't need that uh, the outer brackets right there. So I now have uh, 1 plus um, 0 decimal 0, 0.05. I can actually simplify that and just write it as 1.005. Uh, that is all being raised to the power of n, and then I have minus 1. Okay. Again, noticing that I have some um, like terms right here, I can go and add 1 to both sides of the equation, and I'm left with 3.5 is equal to 1 decimal 0, 0, 0.05 raised to the power of n. Okay. So continuing on right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take the common log now of both sides because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to isolate for n. So when you take the common log of both sides, we have log of 3.5 is equal to the log of 1 decimal 0, 0, 005 to the power of n. Um, using my logarithmic laws here, okay, I can go and write the n in front. So I have n log of 1 decimal 0, 0, 005, like so. Okay. And then how do we get uh, n isolated right here? Well, I just have to get rid of this log of 1 decimal 0, 0, 005, because of course those are being multiplied right here. The opposite operation is to divide. And so when I divide here, I'm left with n is equal to log of 3.5 divided by the log of 1 decimal 0, 0, 005. Okay. And I think if we go back up to the question up here, it said that it wanted you to determine how many um, uh, monthly investments would be made. And so I'm just going to assume that we wanted to round to the nearest month right here. 
And so when you put this into your calculator, you should get that n is equal to approximately, then again, rounding to the nearest month of 252 months. Okay, so that's how you do a question like that. So notice that we've put kind of all the skills in this unit uh, into place so that we don't need to use technology so that we can go and find it by hand. All right, let's go on to example two. So example two says we're going to be solving a problem involving loans. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the equation. It's um, very similar, um, a couple different uh, things though. So we have um, in this time PV rather than uh, FV. So PV is my present value. Uh, and then we still have R all multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus I uh, raised to the power of negative N like so and then we divide by I okay so the one thing I want to remind you is how you find I so maybe what you will go and tackle that right away right here is I is equal to of course the interest rate um, but that's divided by the number of, uh, of compounds okay so uh, we'll tackle I in a second he here but let's uh, let's see what this question is, is talking about so this is a person borrows fifteen hundred dollars, or sorry, fifteen thousand um, dollars to buy a car. Uh, the person can afford to pay three hundred dollars a month. The loan will re be repaid with equal monthly payments of six percent annual interest, compounded monthly, so the same as what we dealt with in the previous example. Um, how many monthly payments? So we're solving for n again. Well, the person make. Okay. So as I said, let's tackle I right here. The interest rate is six percent and we are dividing it by 12 and so we get the exact same thing we had in the previous example um, and now what we'll start doing here is we will substitute in our information so the person borrows uh, $15,000 so that is our present value that goes in right here okay the amount that we are um, that we can afford to pay per month that's our regular investment is $300 okay we have one minus 1 plus my i value right here is 0 decimal 0, 0, 005 all raised to the power of negative n like that okay and then the i uh, is also going to go down here as 0 decimal 0, 0, 005 okay so we're going to follow almost the exact same way to simplify this question um, as we did with the one before i just wanted to show you how we could uh, also solve a loan question like this so um, following the same steps, I will multiply both sides by the 0 decimal 0, 0, 005. You may want to try to pause the video and just do this one on your own right here. But when you do that anyways, you're left with 75 is equal to 300 uh, brackets 1 minus 1 plus 0 decimal 0, 0, 005 raised to the power of n. Um, like so. Okay. I will go now and get rid of this uh, 300. When you do that, uh, when you divide both sides by 300, 75 divided by 300 leaves you with a quarter. So we're left with 0.25. We no longer need these outside brackets, so we have 1 minus. You can go and combine these terms such that it is uh, going to be 1, 0, 0, 5, all raised to the power of negative n. Okay, you do need these brackets uh, because this uh, negative n is only um, uh, to do with this, uh, this number right here. Okay. Uh, and now from here, just like I did before, I'm going to notice that we have um, a like term that we can deal with. So I'll subtract 1 from both sides. This gives me negative 0.75 is equal to negative uh, 1 decimal 0, 0, 005 all raised to the power of negative n. Um, because I notice that both of my terms are negative right here, we can go and divide by a negative. When we divide by a negative, essentially you can just get rid of your negatives like so. So we're left with the following. Okay. Uh, so what I will go and do is I will take the common log now of both places on both sides because I'm trying to isolate for n here. So I have the uh, common log of 0 decimal 75 is equal to. Using my uh, power law at the same time right here, I'm going to go and write the negative n in front of the log of 1 decimal 0, 0, 005. Okay. And then in order to isolate for n right here, I will go and divide both sides by um, the log of 1 decimal 0, 0, 005. So I have log of 0 decimal 75 divided by the log of 1 decimal 0, 0, 005. Okay. Now that is equal to negative n. So in order to get rid of the negative right here, what I'm going to do is I will go and multiply both the sides of the equation by a negative. And so to do that, this negative is no longer there. Okay. And so this is a, a, a part where you can go and put this now into our calculator. Uh, because we were again solving for months, I'll round this to the nearest month and you get uh, 57.6801 months which rounds to be approximately 58 monthly payments okay so just
go back to this question, what were we trying to figure out? Well, this person's buying a car for $15,000. They uh, have a 6% annual interest rate, so that's how much they're going to have to pay in addition to the monthly payment. And how long would it take for them to pay this uh, car off? It would, go, it would take um, 58 uh, uh, monthly payments, so we're looking at uh, around five years. All right. Let's go and look at the uh, the last question that we have right here. Uh, last question we have is one dealing with Richter scale. Okay, so um, what I will first start out with is let's uh, give you the Richter, sta Richter scale equation. So Richter scale equation looks something like the following: we have m, and m is a magnitude. So maybe I'll just write this one out just so you have it written down: magnitude. Um, and that is going to be equal to the log. So this time we have a logarithm built into our equation, and we have i all divided by s. Okay, and i right here is going to be microns, and s right here is in intensity. Okay, so we'll use this equation um, in order to uh, to solve this question right here. All right, so let's uh, start attacking this thing. Since the most intense earthquake ever recorded was in Chile in uh, May of uh, 1960 with a magnitude of 9.5. Calculate the intensity of the earthquake in Chile in terms of a standard earthquake. Okay. Well, believe it or not, right here, um, we have everything that we need. So what we're going to do um, is we are just going to um, substitute in our magnitude. So we have our magnitude of 9.5. So that's going to be equal to 9.5 log of I over S just like so. Okay. Now what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to um, rewrite this in terms of an exponential form. So this is saying log, so like technically because this is a 10 right there, that might even help if you want to write this. Uh, 10 to the power of something is going to give you is. Well that something is 9.5. So I can rewrite this in exponential form as 10 raised to the power of 9.5 is equal to i over s. Now this question said that it wanted you to calculate the intensity of the earthquake um, in terms of a standard earthquake like so. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to um, take a look at this and try to uh, isolate for I right here. Okay. When you isolate for I, I is going to be equal to uh, S all multiplied by 10 uh, to the power of 9.5. Okay. So what we can say is we can say that because we have uh, S being multiplied by 10 to the uh, 9.5 is that this earthquake, the one that would happen in Chile, was 9.5 times as intense as a standard earthquake. All right. And uh, the last uh, example that we have right here, uh, I'm still dealing with the, the same question in a similar fashion. It says, in uh, 2010, uh, Haiti experienced an earthquake of magnitude 7. How many times as intense as the um, uh, Haiti earthquake was the Chile earthquake? Okay, So uh, we uh, established that the earthquake that we had up here was um, this. Okay. And so because the uh, Haiti one was of uh, magnitude 7, we can take the Chile one. So Chile one was um, S, and then we had 10 raised to the power of 9.5. And then the Haiti one would be in a similar fashion. It would be S, 10 to the power of 7, like so. And if we apply our exponent laws right here, um, we are going to have uh, 10 divided by 10. So we have the same basis. We can subtract them. We're going to have 10 to the power of 2.5. The S's, of course, will cancel, and so we can say that um, if we if we simplify this, that we are going to have 10 raised to the power of 2.5 is 316. Point, so I'm just using my calculator for this, 22766. Okay, and I think it said right here that it wanted us to round to the nearest whole number, so we know that um, this earthquake is approximately uh, 316. Oops. 316 times as intense. Okay, so that's kind of interesting right there when you talk about uh, intensity because we often hear uh, magnitude, and I, I know I hear uh, an earthquake that you know has uh, on the Richter scale is a five and one that's a six, and you think, well, how much greater is that? This kind of puts it into perspective a little bit. All right, this concludes this lesson and uh, this unit on exponents and logarithms. Thank you very much.